I honestly believe that until we understand why decluttering is so hard, why we have an attachment to our stuff, why we have a cycle of shopping and accumulating, we won't be able to take back control from our belongings and our stuff will dictate our lives. And also, let's be real, decluttering isn't always easy. Sometimes it's emotional, it's physically challenging. And so I just wanted to create a space for this video to acknowledge those difficulties, but also to reflect on the deeper reasons why we struggle with decluttering so that we can be more successful in the future. I think the first reason why it's so hard to declutter is that it takes so much time, energy, and resources. If we're decluttering, we can't be working at the same time. It also can take a physical toll. Sometimes if I do a massive declutter, I just am spent and I can't really do much for the rest of the day. That's also why I've developed a new decluttering strategy called a modular declutter. I'll link a video of an example declutter above and below if you're interested. But I think that modular strategy has really helped with that kind of physical toll it takes. But in addition to that, I think it's just worth noticing that if we had no responsibilities, if we didn't have to work or care for people around us or deal with day-to-day -day stuff, it would actually be a lot easier to declutter because then we could do a little decluttering every single day or do massive declutters once a week or a month. But realistically, if we're working a full-time or multiple jobs or if we have a lot of other responsibilities, it's hard to find that space, time, and energy to actually declutter. I think sometimes that's honestly partially why a lot of wealthy people have more minimized homes. It's because they have the time to take off to declutter. Maybe they can hire more help around the house. And I guess another factor on top of that is it's easier to repurchase things so they're more willing to get rid of things. Anyway, that's beside the point, but for most of us, it's hard to find that space, time, and energy. And I just want to acknowledge that. A second reason why decluttering is so hard is that society has taught us, has socialized us to be very attached to our belongings. In our interactions with other people or through media, we're reinforced for having stuff. How many times do you see ads on TV telling us we need more stuff? Or how many times when a friend compliments you on a new outfit do you feel really powerful and excited? Not only that, but with modern technology, stuff is produced so much more rapidly now, it's easy to order stuff stuff online, and so we just get way more stuff, and that is normalized. As a result, we have more stuff to declutter, and that makes it harder. A third reason is that belongings can be a form of self-expression. Humans have this amazing ability to appreciate beauty and to create art, which serves no purpose other than to create an experience or an emotion for the viewer. And I think that's something really incredible about humans, but it can also lead us to place more symbolic meaning on objects. It's also understandable that style and fashion is one way we express something about ourselves to others, and that artistic process can be meaningful. Also, Owning certain objects might communicate something to the people around you. Like if you have an electric car, maybe that means you're showing, I care about the environment, I'm taking action, and others should too. But at the end of the day, that self-expression can sometimes lead us to buy in excess. So it's something to watch out for. A fourth one that I think is really powerful and so true is that we can feel like belongings can never betray or hurt us. They're things we actually have control over. When we buy something, there's not some kind of deep emotional connection there. It's just a thing that can serve some kind of purpose or form of self-expression for us. And we can have that relationship with a belonging in a way that is going to bring us joy, but that object doesn't think for itself and it's not going to go out and do something to hurt us. And so there's a comfort in belongings. But realistically, even that short-term joy that those objects bring aren't necessarily going to give us that deep sense of satisfaction that real relationships that might hurt us can give us. I think it comes back to that human desire to have control and to not have chaos and to not have to fear for the future. But ultimately, I think we all know deep down that objects aren't going to make us happy in the long run. Another reason why we're so attached to our belongings and why it's hard to declutter is that belongings can be evidence of history. They take us back to a time in the past, whether it's personally in your own life or even think about the last time you went to a museum and you saw an object that had some kind of significance. You feel something in relation to that and it kind of serves as proof that something happened. And I think in our own lives, we can look back at memorabilia or objects from our past or objects from people we love. They can take us back 
to a time in this incredible way. And again, it comes back to the human mind and how we can imagine things and revisit memories in a way that's really magical. But the problem is sometimes we can take it too far and it just makes it emotionally hard to let go of the belongings. Once we see an object as a representation of that memory or that experience or that person, it makes it that much harder to let it go. I think it's important to remember the reality is the object is not the person. The object is not the memory. And there might be other ways to remember that period of your life. A sixth reason why it's so hard to declutter is that our belongings can express status and self-worth. Let's be real, a big reason why we accumulate is to impress other people or to express something about ourselves, express our interests or our style or what we're passionate about. And while obviously sometimes objects can do that in a really helpful way, I also think it can start to take on a life of its own until it turns into a keeping up with the Joneses type of situation, where as soon as we buy something, we want something more and we want something more in order to keep up with the people around us, when realistically, people probably aren't paying that much attention to us. That's definitely something I need to remind myself when I'm thinking about shopping, that usually people won't even notice the belongings I buy. A seventh reason why it's hard to declutter is that shopping and accumulating can turn into a pastime. It can develop into a behavioral cycle that takes on a life of its own. And because of that, we accumulate more. And then as a result, we have so much more and decluttering becomes that much more overwhelming. When we buy something, we get some kind of emotional high off of that anticipation. It feels good to buy something, especially if it's an object that you feel like will express something about you to other people or will be really useful to you. There's just an excitement with that. And as that happens, we are emotionally reinforced to keep doing that. And it can get a little bit out of control. If we feel like buying things will make us happier, which it can maybe do in the short run, we can become more and more addicted to accumulating. And sometimes shopping can become so enjoyable that we even start buying things for other people. Like I said, it just takes on a life of its own. So I think it's helpful if when you're shopping, you take a moment before you press purchase to just think about why you're shopping, whether it's actually gonna give you deep, meaningful happiness in the long run, or whether it's just part of this short-term behavioral cycle that's been reinforced over time. And also think back to how much harder it's gonna make decluttering in the future. Anyway, I know a lot of this was just about why we accumulate and have stuff, but realistically, if we don't understand that process of accumulation, we're not gonna be able to successfully minimize and declutter in the long run. So I hope this video was a little bit helpful to you. If you did find it to be, I would so appreciate if you would take a moment to hit the thumbs up button. It's a great way to support the channel. And if you want to see more videos on simple living, minimalism, and building an empowering mindset, then hit the subscribe button below. Anyway, that's pretty much all I have for you today, but thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.